Typically, whenever you have two parties who want to communicate over the internet, they use a protocol known as TCP IP. Uh, and as part of TCP IP, they have to engage in what's called the TCP three-way handshake. Three-way handshake. And this is uh, this video, I'll tell you about how that works, and I'll talk a bit about how uh, one could uh, mount an analysis service attack on this three-way handshake. So to begin with, let's say you have uh, two parties, and we typically think of them as a client. And let's say the client wants to communicate with a server, and uh, they're communicating somehow over the internet. So there's kind of the internet uh, in the middle. Imagine this is a big internet right here. And they want to communicate with each other. And the way that works is the client begins and initiates by sending a request to the server. It's a request to initiate a connection. And this request uh, is typically known, it's, it, there's a message involved, and that message is typically called a SYN message. Okay, And this is basically the client indicating to the server that it wants to connect. It's basically a message of intent of some sort. And in this case, SYN actually stands for, for synchronize. Stands for synchronize. Okay, and the server basically will respond back, uh, if it, assuming it wants to communicate with this particular client, it responds back with a SYN ACK message. And in this case, the ACK is part of SYN ACK, stands for acknowledge. So basically it's telling the client that it acknowledges that the client wants to connect, and it's, it's basically offering an opportunity to complete the connection. And the client, in turn, sends back a response. If it if it's sort of uh, confirming its intent with its initial SYN packet, it sends back an ACK as a response. So there's basically the flow of SYN, SYN ACK, and then ACK, and again, ACK here stands for acknowledge. And once these three messages have been passed back and forth, the connection between uh, the client and server is effectively established. And this is kind of what establishes the connection. So connection is established at this point. Okay, the connection is established. Okay, and it, it turns out this approach, as I mentioned earlier, is subject to a pretty well-known denial of service attack, and that a denial of service attack is called a SYN flood. Uh, and as the name suggests, the attack works by having the client send different SYN messages to the server. However, the key is, in this particular attack, is that the client will not respond back with an ACK. And, and let's think about um, what's going to happen. So whenever a SYN message is sent from a client to a server, um, each time the server receives a SYN request, it has to basically allocate some space. So it's going to have a, a little space table, or state table rather, um, and it's basically going to allocate some information in this table associated with this SYN request. So basically it has to, to maintain this entry in this table. And you might want to pause the video for a moment and think about why the server even needs to maintain any kind of state in the first place. Uh, and the short answer here is that the server needs to allocate resources so that when the final ACK message is sent, when this particular message is sent, that message can be then identified with the original SYN message. And therefore, these three messages together will be tied together as part of one transaction between a particular client and a particular server. Really, by transaction, I mean a particular session. And when you consider the fact that uh, in real life, you may have a server that's accepting many different SYN messages from many clients, uh, it has to be able to keep track of who it's receiving messages from, and it needs to maintain the state table to be able to keep track of these messages appropriately. Okay. Now, at this point, when, when the SYN message is sent from a client to a server, uh, and the server allocates space, at this point, prior to when this, this ACK message is sent, let's, let's kind of call this point one, at point one, um, we have what's called a half open connection, a half open connection between the client and server, okay? And at this point, it stays in this half open state until the final ACK message is sent. And once the ACK message is received from the by the server from the client, uh, then it becomes just a regular connection. So basically, the, the, the half open nature uh, of the connection is no longer there. It's just a regular connection between the client and server. It's a fully open connection, uh, if you will, okay? Now, um, you know, I think what's what's interesting here is that if you start to send, if the server starts to receive many different SYN messages, it's going to start allocating a lot of space for those SYN messages. And if it never receives back an ACK message, it's going to just keep that space available for some period of time. And so the idea is that when you actually receive the final ACK, the server can then 
deallocate the space and start using it for other purposes. But if it doesn't receive an act message, it's going to just keep allocating space. Now, to make matters worse, it turns out that in the Internet Protocol, or IP, the client can actually provide it. And normally what happens in these messages is the client, as part of the SYN message, includes uh, in the packet, it'll include a copy of its IP address. So it'll send, send a copy of its IP address. Uh, now, in, in a legitimate use case, if somebody was a legitimate client, they'd be sending their actual IP address, which is their kind of location on the internet. But if we're dealing with a case where somebody's trying to mount a denial of a service attack, they may not send back their real IP address. They may actually only send kind of a fake IP address, a forged IP address. And it turns out that you can, what's called spoof, it's a, the term that we typically use, Spoofing an IP address is where you provide a fake IP address. And this is something that actually can be done uh, on the internet today. There's no way to, uh, the, the internet protocol itself has no way to kind of prevent uh, IP spoofing. And, and in effect, what IP spoofing does is it provides to the server a fake location for where the client is. And in this case, uh, not only will the, the connection, you know, never uh, complete, obviously, if, if the server receives this fake IP address, it might be sending back this SYN act to some other client somewhere on the internet doesn't even know who it's talking to because it's not going to be talking back to the, the real client because it's going to think the real client or the client that it's talking to is located at this fake IP address. And when it sends something to that IP address, the system at this address is, well, I never really sent a SYN packet, so it's probably just going to ignore the SYN act. And, and um, not only will, will this, will having a fake IP address or spooked IP address cause the server never to respond back to the client in an appropriate fashion, and, and in this case is also no way for the server to actually tell who really initiated the connection. And so what the server is basically going to do is it's going to keep allocating space with these half open connections. And gradually that space is just going to get all filled up. There soon there'll be just no more space left. And when the state space is filled up, uh, what, what that means is now if there's a legitimate request, imagine there's a legitimate client right here. Um, if a legitimate client uh, sends a request, a SYN request, then it's going to basically, let's say it sends a SYN request to this, to the server. The server is going to have nowhere to allocate information about the SYN request. It's basically just going to drop the request. And so legitimate clients are not going to be able to, uh, to, to be able to respond to requests once they've filled up their state space, or even worse, in some cases, depending on the implementation, you know, some servers might actually crash once they've used up all this information. They may have no more room left and they'll just, they'll just effectively die. Uh, and so, you know, th these are uh, obviously legitimate concerns. And in, in either case, what's happening is there's a denial of service attack. And this is the TCP SYN flood, I should, I should be clear, is a denial of service attack. It prevents legitimate parties from gaining access to a very important service. And this attack, it's very much a classic attack, and, and there are now some countermeasures in place for dealing with it. But the reason that I wanted to mention it is in part that, that many denial of service attacks try to leverage a situation in which a server has to maintain state of some sort and allocate memory for that state. And, and also, a lot of denial of service attacks do involve the notion of spoofing an IP address. And so I thought that by kind of understanding these particular elements of denial of service attacks, you may be able to recognize um, alternate situations and protocols in which similar attacks can be mounted.